Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a really long time since I last posted. I think the last time I posted was right after I'd gotten into dental school and in just two weeks, I'll officially be a third year student at the NYU College of Dentistry. So time has really flown by. My intention with this channel was obviously to upload a lot more frequently, but I discovered TikTok and that short form content over there was really easy to keep up with and with very minimal editing or you know setting up uh, anything uh, I just was able to get a lot of my content out a lot faster so I've been very active on TikTok I also post pretty frequently on Instagram so if you're not following me there um, you can do so I'll try and put the handle somewhere on the screen um, and put a link in the description so it's easier but it's basically on route to smiles the same as here so you can find me in those places to see what I've been up to the past few years but talking about TikTok uh, one of the things one of my videos that's done really well over there has been about my personal statement. So I figured I would read you the personal statement that got me into dental school. Also, I ask you to stay tuned to the very end because I will also kind of give you what I recommend in terms of the framework for writing your personal statement, how to set that up, how to go about it, because I also offer help to pre-dental students who reach out to me in editing their personal statements and proofreading them. So um, if you're interested in that, please stay tuned. But without further ado, this is the personal statement that got me into dental school. The emerald colored wall in my home leading up to my room is filled with picture frames all arranged to show my progression from three months old to where I am now at 21 years old. The ones of me as a baby are all very cute with me dressed up in all sorts of ridiculous outfits sporting a half tooth smile. However, around the age of about seven, my smile vanishes from the pictures on the wall. No more gummy smiles or innocent grins, just a tight-lipped curve of my mouth and subsequent photos. It's not like I didn't want to smile, but rather I was told not to. My mother, often the more critical one of my parents, would instruct me not to smile in pictures because I would show my crooked teeth and overbite. However, the girl in the photos on the emerald wall starts to smile again at 12 years old. Instead of a tight-lipped smile, there's a row of pearly whites that are straight as can be. While someone else looking at the wall would only see a child progressing through different stages in her life, I notice a progression in confidence. I was able to experience firsthand the impact that dentistry had not just on my appearance, but on my overall self-esteem and perspective. This experience became the driving force behind my desire to pursue a career in dentistry. People who don't know the story of the wall often ask me why I want to pursue a career in dentistry. Answering that question is fairly complex given that it is both easy and somewhat complicated. It is easy in the sense that in its simplest form, my answer boils down to an emerald wall in my house combined with my desire to help others. However, not only is that answer a bit of a cliche, but it also oversimplifies my passion and ambition towards dentistry. To me, the reason for pursuing a career in dentistry is part cheesy, part practical, but entirely authentic, and something that I've worked towards through my extracurricular activities and coursework at Fordham, and a journey that I look to continue through dental school. My typical answer to the question of why I want a career in dentistry is a bit cheesy. I'm pursuing dentistry because of the experience I had as a child and how dentistry altered my confidence. That sparked my desire to pursue one of the only careers in which you can say that you spread smiles for a living. I had braces for exactly two years, three months, and one week. When I see the emerald wall, I'm reminded of how getting braces was the best decision my parents ever made for me. From then on, I truly realized the impact dentistry can have on people's lives and how fulfilling it would be to help others improve their smiles and in turn, their self-confidence. Then there is my practical answer in that dentistry combines all of the things that I love and find interesting. A dental career is a combination of science, medicine, and engineering with aspects of art. Personally, I've always been interested in science, but also found myself drawn to art as means of expression. The responsibilities of a dentist involve the mastering of scientific knowledge and surgical precision required in cleanings, fillings, root canals, and extractions, with the ultimate byproduct being an aesthetically pleasing and healthier smile. The saying goes that one's eyes serve as the windows to their soul, yet missing in this expression is that the mouth and one's smile is the window to the rest of the body. I also find it absolutely fascinating and extremely important how one's oral health can be indicative of their overall health and that 
dental professionals can be some of the first people to point out and diagnose systemic diseases. While I've spoken about different reasons regarding my desire to pursue a dental career, the true reason behind my pursuit of a career in dental health incorporates pieces of both the practical and the cliche, along with other motivations that have been shaped through my various experiences. Equally influential are the experiences I've had through my school coursework, hours spent working at a dental clinic, and the amateur advice I regularly give my family on their oral health. I set the goal to become a dentist early on after seeing the smile of the girl in the photos on the emerald wall blossom and my desire to achieve this dream has only grown since then. Becoming a dentist will allow me to pursue a passion of mine and ensure that more walls in the homes of others see the change that my emerald wall did. So that's just my personal statement. I've also read my NYU supplement that obviously got me into NYU College of Dentistry on my TikTok. If you guys would like, I could also post that in one clean video here. Now for the framework that I recommend. So obviously we all know that we need to have a really good intro to hook our readers in. The way that I recommend going about this is by painting a picture for your audience. You really want to appeal to your readers' senses. It can be about anything. Clearly you just heard how I wrote about a green wall in my house. The trap that I feel like a lot of pre-dental students fall into here is the fact that they start writing about a particular shadowing experience that they had, which technically is fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but out of the hundred or so personal statements that I personally read from the pre-dental students who reached out to me, I would say about 80% or so have started off the same way. And I'm just one person. These admissions officers for these dental schools literally read thousands and thousands of applications every single cycle. So you really want to try and ensure that you will stand out. Then after you've established your intro, then you want to start expanding upon the ideas that you planted in your intro and really start to answer the why dentistry question, which is the point of the personal statement. After that, you can start talking about your dental shadowing experiences or your dental assisting experiences, um, anything that's been really influential. It's totally fine to do that and it would actually be beneficial to do so. But again, there is a small trap that I've noticed that dental students fall into here they start talking about too many experiences. And I caution against this because dental schools already receive all of your involvement and shadowing hours and resumes. They have all of that on file. The personal statement is one of the only spots in your application where you can stand out as a unique individual and not just another file on their desk. So don't have your personal statement start to become an expansion of your resume. Once you've talked about some of the more influential experiences or what you've observed and seen, then you can start to close your personal statement. So the closing has to be as strong as your opening, if not honestly stronger, because like I said, the intro is what hooks your reader into wanting to continue reading, but the conclusion is what they're ultimately left with. And so you want to leave a really great lasting impression. So the way that I recommend doing the closing is to have more of an emotional appeal. Most of us, if not all of us, have entered this field because we like helping people. We want to help people feel better about themselves, to get them out of pain or whatever it may be. And so that is what I want you to draw upon in your conclusion. That's what I mean by an emotional appeal. And that's how I recommend closing your personal statement. But again, this is just a very general framework that I recommend. You can get as creative and unique with your personal statement as you'd like. It's just that I receive a lot of messages online from pre-dental students who are struggling, so I figured this could be helpful. So that's kind of it when it comes to personal statements. If you're a pre-dental student who has found this video and you're applying this cycle or next cycle, or honestly, whenever this video finds you, feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email is en route to smiles at gmail.com. I'll try and put that somewhere on the screen in editing uh, and I'll put it in the description too. Feel free to reach out to me whenever. I like to think I have pretty good response times, but yeah, I'm always happy to help and I hope this was helpful. I hope to upload a bit more frequently on YouTube in the future. So thank you everyone.